looking back on the last 20 years at Houston Ballet, some of the great milestones for me is, of course, our building, moving into this world-class uh, ballet building, not unlike the palace that we are in now, uh, a building dedicated to nothing but classical ballet right in the heart of the city, connected to the theatre, um, is something I'm very proud of. And I think, you know, like, a, uh, like the pyramids, it will be there. And classical ballet will be a part of Houston Ballet's downtown heart forever. And that, that is a very special thing. Getting to the 20th year, you also, I have ballets now that are 20 years old and there are people in the ballets that weren't born when they were made. That is strange. We've had children that have come through our academy from five all the way into the company. Um, so all of those things feel very sentimental. But as a director, you're often not looking back. You're, you're just plowing forward. And we just came out of the hardest experience, which was COVID, which was a, an entire planet experience. And the loss of live performing and, and this idea that all of what we love could just evaporate was, uh, it makes me uh, goosebumpy and emotional just to think about it. It was a hard time for all of us. Um, but that self-reflection then made me even more determined that what we do as an art is so important um, and that that passing from generation to generation, uh, that's what makes ballet and dance so special. Um, of course, my favorite art form. Um, but I, I think that, that that is something I'm proud of. I think that we came through COVID in such strength. We didn't lay off any dancers. We uh, kept the company going on video and um, that was hard, but uh, I'm proud of that for us. I, I didn't start ballet until I was 16. So even though both my parents were dancers, uh, my brother and I both had nothing to do with ballet. We were around ballet, we watched ballet every day, but it was not for us. So we, we grew up with it backstage, and when you watch a ballet from backstage, it's hard. Uh, Mum was in hospital with a torn Achilles, Dad had a knee surgery, so ballet was always hard. Um, so when I was about 14, my mother stopped being really working with the Australian Ballet, and uh, then I started going as an audience member, and then of course I fell in love with ballet which is just crazy. And I went in and said at 16, Mum, I, I think I want to dance. And she said, too late, you've missed it. Um, but I talked her around and she gave me like a three, four month window um, to prove to her that I was dedicated. Mum and Dad had a ballet school at that point. And I did, and I spent a year with them and then a year at the San Francisco Ballet School. And then I joined the Australian Ballet after two and a half years of training. So then I danced there for 11 years and uh, then moved to America to be a choreographer and director. Uh, performance highlights for me, of course, Manon. I got to do Degriere. Uh, Lensky in Onyegin is uh, Goosebumps. Um, Camille in uh, Merry Widow, Ronnie Hind. Uh, and then one act ballets, Yuri Killian's Forgotten Land. Uh, uh, Beja, I got uh, some wonderful casting through early work of Beja. Sweet on Blanc, we're here at the Paris Opera. Uh, what a wonderful ballet that was to perform. Um, I was very lucky. I mean, one of the highlights, which is an obscure piece, was Equus. We did Domi Rider Sofa's Equus, and I got to play Alan Strang, and that for me, again, was a goosebumpy material. Um, what attracts me to a dancer is, is a, a whole a collection of things, and I, some of them are, are sort of that special it factor that is very hard to describe. Someone can walk onto stage and suddenly you feel a connection or there's a sparkle in their eye, they hear music in a way. But I really like musical dancers and I like dancers that are brave and the fact that they can play any character from a character role to a great dancing role, to an acting role, to a contemporary role and give it always everything that they have. And that to me is what inspires me as a choreographer. Um, yeah. I think the first part of it, if, if you are talented enough, and ultimately we all want to be that person, you, you have that full gauntlet. And that are the, the Sylvies and the Carlos Acostas and people that really are very broad in their range of, of collecting different types of dancing. Um, but we all kind of get stereotyped a little bit as dancers too. And I always try to remind people not to resent the thing that you're so great at. If you're a great jumper and you're always jumping, but you want to be doing something else, still appreciate the fact that you're, you're, the jumping is what got you in the door. Um, no one wants to be pigeonholed, but we kind of get there. Um, 
And I think that there are many ways of exploring different opportunities. You can go and do guestings. You can go and do experimental contemporary work, be in a play, be in a musical. Uh, you can find ways of, of, of getting there. Um, but for me as an artist, it was always about uh, you want to taste everything. You need to see everything. So uh, that's what I would recommend. So Houston Ballet is a company of 61 dancers, and we have a large academy of over 400 students as well. We have a second company that can fluctuate between 12 and up to 20 people. Uh, we have a wonderful sixth floor building that is just ourselves, and in that is dorms uh, for the school, um, as well as multiple studios for the company and the school, and then also a black box theatre. And that, for me as a choreographer, was the, uh, such an important investment. We also have a bridge uh, from our building to the theatre. Uh, so we really are this arts uh, district downtown in Houston. And Houston is a city as big and as rich as it is, is still just redeveloping itself in a downtown sense. People are moving into the city. There are more apartments downtown. So I think the arts district is just at the beginning of that flourish. Like uh, I'm from Australia and when I first joined the Australian Ballet, our ballet building was in the middle of all these warehouses, in nowhere near anything, and now it's like in the heart of the most beautiful part of Melbourne. So um, I, I see Houston on that same trajectory with, uh, with the city. As far as reps are concerned, we have two more reps to go this year. We have Swan Lake. We performed it earlier on tour in Japan this year, so this will be it now at home in Houston. And we have a premiere by Justin Peck um, and a return of a premiere by Azul Barton, who's a wonderful Canadian choreographer. And the third piece of the evening is uh, one of my first ballets, which is a ballet called Divergence, which is a piece I made on the Australian Ballet, oh my goodness, like 30 odd years ago. Um, to Bizet, La Lazienne Suite, it's a big company piece. So that program is exciting to me because we're still, of course, coming out of COVID and all three of these ballets are full company spectacles. So it's great to have everyone back on stage. And next season, we have the return of John Newmyer's Midsummer Night's Dream and the wonderful Sir Kenneth McMillan's mailing coming back to our stage. So uh, I couldn't be happier with that.